All right, everyone. Uh, apologize for my tardiness tonight. My neighbor decided to mow his lawn as I was setting up. Um, this is episode six of the Garden Gap. Tonight episode is prepping your garden for planting. Uh, by now, if you're planting in your garden, you should have uh, your onions, your leafy greens, such as spinach, lettuce, onions, things of that nature, your brassicas, your ca cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, in your beds, um, ready to go. Um, if you don't and you have prepped your beds, this is going to show you how to uh, get ready. If you can't hear me, I apologize, and the bugs are a little bad tonight, so you're going to see me swatting. I'm not crazy. Um, the uh, mosquitoes are, I think tell it's going to be a bad season for mosquitoes. So, we're in our garden bed. This is our 4x18 garden bed. It is what we plant our peppers in. Um, tonight, I'm going to show you a little bit of getting it ready for pep uh, planting peppers, which we do the first week of June, typically about June 2nd or 3rd, the 4th at the latest. Um, so, what we have here on the bed, these hoops, uh, protected our, our garden through the winter um, and we're gonna take these out first um, we put these in and plastic over them and hold everything down and it helps us uh, keep a warm microclimate in our garden and we'll be talking about that this fall so let me take a few of these out and just set them off to the side here um, I'm not doing the whole bed because it's supposed to be a short video and it's a lot of work. So, but uh, I will be putting these in once we plant because I'll be putting the shade pot over to uh, during the hot months, like July. On our peppers, uh, things like peppers, they like warm weather, but they don't like it too warm because uh, pollen goes start out at 85 degrees. So if the temperatures get up around 80, 85, 90, 95, and your pollen is going to go sterile, so your peppers won't produce much. So we, we're going to put shade cloth over it on these hoops. Uh, we're not going to have as many as we did for plastic, but we're going to um, keep it a little bit cooler this summer to uh, keep the plants from going sterile. So, as you can see, we have some grass that grew in this bed, um, some weeds. So, what we're going to do is we have several tools here we can use to get rid of them. And the first one, the politically correct term for this is a hoop hoe. Let me show you the end of this here. See, it makes an entire hoop, and this part moves back and forth. It wiggles. Um, the non PC term is called a hula hoe. Um, a lot of people don't like that term. I don't really care either way. So, what you do is you're going to get, you can either do this from outside the bed or get in the bed. I get in the bed, okay, and we're going to move it back and forth, just rock, and it gets down, as you can see, and gets rid of the weeds. Um, you can also use this during the season to uh, weed your beds in between your plants. It's great for that. Uh, you can't do it as aggressively during the season because you may kill the weeds. So I'm going to just take this, run it through my soil, my compost, what's in here, to dislodge this stuff. And like I said, I'm just doing a small area. Um, you do this. Um, so, you really want to get on the sides really well. That's where the grass is coming off the edge. Um, so, See how well this 
this does. Uh, I've gotten almost everything out of this small batch. Okay. Better really make sure it's So we'll set that aside. The other option is you can use what I call a cat's claw. It's a cultivator. It's got four tines on the end. You use this just like you did the whole of them. Except for this is for ripping stuff out, not cutting it out. So you just put it in here, pull towards you, and it was large as everything. Works really well. Again, this could be used during the season. However, I don't use it that much during the season because again it can rip out plants. It gets down, can disturb the roots. Not my favorite. Uh, for during the season. Beginning of the season, deep weeds like this, really easy to get rid of. Um, so, we'll go ahead and dislodge some through here, especially along the edge. Of course, the best tool that you can have, uh, right here, reach down, pull, shake the soil off, get rid of it. Uh, it's good to have a bucket with you for all this stuff to pull out. I'm just going to toss it off to the side for now since we're going to clean this whole bed this weekend. Get it ready. So, there is one more tool you can use to do the same exact job. And they run anywhere from $30 to $40. And some of you might remember when you were a kid a tool card of garden music. Okay. Look at this beast of a tool. Alright. It's got <coughs> three sets of two tines that spin around. It can be used as a cultivator. It can be used to get rid of weeds. Um, you can use it in any configuration you want. These come off. Okay, you just loosen up the bolt. You can now make rows. You can aerate with it. You can pull weeds with it. If you're gonna do weeds, I recommend the one for rows. So, you got two here. Um, and I'll show you how to use this. You're just going to take it, put it down in the dirt, and roll it back and forth. Just think of using a rolling pin to hold them in, okay? And it'll get everything out. Uh, this doesn't work as good as the cooler coat or as the cultivator. Um, I really like it for mixing in my compost, which we're going to do tonight. So, I'll set that off to the side for now. Um, we do have our compost here. We've got our fertilizer over here. So I'm just going to grab my rake. You can use basically any style rake for this. You can use a leaf rake. You can use one of these bow rakes. And you're just going to take all of your matter that you broke down off. Most of it's going to be sitting on top. Just skim it off. Like I said, normally I would throw that into a uh, bucket. I don't have one handy. It's going to go in our compost bin this weekend when we fully cut the bed. So we have this nice area. We've gotten the weeds out. Um, we talked in episode two about fertilizer. So. This is what I have for fertilizer today. I've got the leafy greens, which is a 545. I've got rose, uh, which is a 463. Plants don't care what the fertilizer is, okay? They don't know what it is, they just know it's food. So, together, if you were to use this in one area, this makes it a 9. 10, 8, no big deal. Okay, so we're going to mix it together in a bucket. Be 
because I am using two varieties and I want to spread out my fertilizer evenly throughout the bed. So, these two bags will do this entire bed. So I got this stuff on clearance for a dollar eighty a bag, I think. It's normally eight bucks. So this is our fertilizer here. We're gonna mix it all together. One bad thing about organic fertilizer, okay, this is it here. It stinks. It does awesome, but it stinks. So, let's uh, cover over this area with some fertilizer. Like I said, I'm not doing a very big area tonight because we're doing the whole bed on Sunday. And if I did the whole bed tonight, I'll louder. <laughs> If we did this whole bed tonight, this would be a two hour video. And I really don't want to do a two hour video tonight. So we've got some fertilizer in there. Okay. So the next thing we have to take care of is compost. And this is the compost we have here. It's composted cow manure. They mix wood chips with cow manure. And it, uh, it gets uh, broken down into this. A two inch thick layer of compost will feed your bed for the entire season. Um, I hope so too, Mandy. Um, I'd like to uh, get rid of your nickname. I don't really want to call you Typhoid Mandy anymore. Um, what? Mandy said she thinks she can get stuff to grow with my help this year oh. so um we got the fertilizer in we got compost so this you can bring compost to your bed in one of two ways you can use a wheelbarrow a gorilla cart like i'm using or jenny just handed me a five gallon bucket a 72 square foot bed, which is this, a four by 18, with um, two inches thick of compost. We'll take roughly 12 cubic feet to do this bed, which is 24 of these buckets. Buckets on a bed this size, not my favorite way to go. My flower beds, sure, this way, no, not ideal. Um, but you can do it this way if you want to. Our first bed, we filled soil. Uh, we didn't have a wheelbarrow, so we did uh, two cubic feet of soil by hand, which was, no, two yards, which is 54 cubic feet by bucket. And it took us, what, Jen, four hours? About that, yeah. About four hours to get our soil into our bed. So like I said, not the uh, not the best way to do it. So we have here, let me tip you down so you can see. This gorilla cart holds four cubic feet. So three of these will do this whole bed for the season. You see the area over here that we did? Okay, so to put it in, You can do the dainty way and use a shovel. There's about 12 shovelfuls in there and I don't feel like doing it by shovel. I'm not dainty. I'm not a delicate little flower. So, I'm gonna move my, move my tools. I'm gonna move my garden cart. That's Jenny's little scooter. Okay. And I'm going to wheel this to where it is. You have the option of grabbing the handle and dumping. However, 
my favorite way. Put the tires right against the bed and tip. Okay? And it's gardening. Nothing wrong with getting your hands dirty. It's the best tool we have. Dump it. Okay. You're going to want to take your shovel out of your bed. And the bow rake that we used earlier, we're going to want to grab. Uh, you can use a 2x4 if you want, just a piece of 2x4 to spread this. And you're just going to spread it across. And you're going to want to leave two inches deep on top of your beds because you're going to mulch. Mulch will suppress weeds, help keep in moisture. You won't have to water as often or as much. So you spread this out. I'm going to flip this over because I did mix uh, fertilizer in. And I want to get down deep enough to mix all that up. So it's smoothed out. If I was continuing, this whole bed would be done. Let's just say we did our whole bed. And there we go. We have fertilized, we have weed, and we have composted, and it takes, what, 10 minutes to do that small section? If you had a 4x4 bed, you'd be done by now. So, there, tired of bending over. I'm old, that doesn't work that well. So, here we are. Let me spin you around so you can get a better look. The weeds that look like this now look like this. These few that are in here, you don't have to pull out, okay? You can leave them in. You're going to put mulch, uh, mulch over it. Uh, the pine shavings that we use in our compost, we use in here. Um, that will uh, break down. It's nitrogen for your bed. So it doesn't matter if you leave these in. You can pull them out. Some people like to. I don't care. Okay. Um, so, a couple quick questions. Do you have to add fertilizer? No, you do not. If you're adding compost to your beds, fertilizer is not mandatory. Because, um, I will compost my boot here. Um, Compost isn't mandatory. If you don't use compost, you should fertilize. If you fertilize, um, if, you, if you use compost, you don't have to fertilize. Now, which one's the benefit? Two inches of compost feeds your bed for an entire garden season. I'm looking for a little better yield. Um, I haven't tested a done a soil test on our compost yet, so I don't know what the nutrient ratio is. So I'm going to take some extra uh, precautions. That's what I'm looking for, precautions. And add a little bit of fertilizer in just so I have the nutrients that this bed needs, okay? Um, especially with tomatoes. Our tomatoes climb up that trellis and come back down. Tomatoes, I'm gonna add extra fertilizer. I want bigger yields. And let's just recap on the fertilizer. The three numbers I showed, if you didn't catch the fertilizer video, go back and watch it, episode two. Uh, the three numbers were the NPK rating, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. If you, you really want to balance fertilizer, say a 555, a 10-10-10, something of that nature, uh, you can use synthetic if you want to. Just uh, dilute it down. So you don't give too much. So this we got roughly almost a 10, 10, 10. It's going to give us a great start. The fertilizer I just put in is going to take about four weeks to break down before the plants can take it up. We're looking second week, third week of June before it picks it up. Uh, compost is going to feed it now. Compost 
does not directly feed the plants unless you make a compost tea, which we'll show you once the season gets going. The compost feeds the microbes, the microbes feed the plant. It's a symbiotic relationship. Uh, so you don't have to do compost, but if you do, two inches thick, you take the width times the length, so a four by four bed would be 16 square feet. Uh, divide by six, because you want two inches deep. You're looking at uh, roughly cubic, three cubic feet of, of uh, compost to feed your garden for the season. Not a whole lot. Uh, we get ours in bulk. This is our compost pile over here that just got delivered the other day. Okay, that's three cubic yards. That's 81 cubic feet. We have more than enough. So that's how you prep your beds for the season. Uh, we do have a lot of beds here to get going. Uh, this one we actually took care of. This is our onion and leek and garlic bed. Um, we took care of that one in the fall. So it's ready to go. We don't need to do anything to that one, but the other beds we do have to do. They've got to be weeded. They have to be fertilized, compost, and once plants are in, mulched. So... Thank you for coming to episode six of Garden Gab. Uh, hopefully now you have the basics to get your garden started. Um, I am dealing with the stupid mosquitoes out here tonight. Um, give you a good jumping off point. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll answer what I can. Um, so I thank you for coming and everyone have a good night.